minute. We'll start with my oldest child. And um, I had a hard time getting pregnant. And so, of course, for two years, Tom was over in England. And so when he got home, but we, we were, he was home for, well, anyway, we'd been married for five years before I finally got pregnant with Nanette. And I always said, if I only have one child, I want her to be a girl. And I got my girl. And I got just exactly a dark-haired, dark-eyed, beautiful daughter. And uh, so she was my first child. And uh, she has been talking about my children. I think they're so wonderful. Uh, it's hard for me to talk about them. She has been the joy of my life. I hear from her each day. And she's just very compassionate. She does for people. She, I think everybody just loves Nanette. She, she's such a kind, wonderful person, beautiful woman. And she's a fantastic cook. She's a wonderful mother. She's just always doing something for somebody. And then David. He, he's just a perfect husband for Nanette. He's hardworking, he's energetic, he's always upbeat, and um, he, he's just, and not only that, he loves his mother-in-law. And I don't care what they say about mother-in-law jokes, I hate them. They make me so upset because I try to be a real good mother-in-law. And so just, I don't care about their jokes. Just on David, when you were talking about in the hospital, you were going to have David come get you out. That's right. What, what did they tell you to keep you there? Oh, oh. <laughs> That's funny, yo. When they when I kept telling them David was going to come and get me out, they said if you uh, it, sign yourself out, your insurance will stop. And as of now, your bill is a hundred and ten thousand dollars. <laughs> they never heard another word from me. That was the <laughs> end of that. But before I got out of that hospital, the bill was two hundred and twelve thousand dollars. And of that, I only had to pay $250 because of this health insurance plan I had. Otherwise, I'd have had to mortgage my home. But you just knew David would get you out of there. He could do it. If anybody could do it, David could get me out of there. I, I, and they, <laughs> they said, you had to hear about David's going to get me out of here. In that same stretch, every time I wanted to talk to Nanette, I'd have to call the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so they had four children. Mark. And I was there for Mark's birth. And it went well and, and uh, he was a nice, gorgeous, great big baby and and he he we just had a wonderful time with him. Well, I was also there for Scott's birth. And that was a scary thing. He was a great big baby, but his lungs weren't sufficiently developed yet. And so when they brought him in, here's this beautiful, great, big baby. And they brought him in so Nanette could see him because they really didn't think that he was going to make it. And so they had to rush him to the children's hospital. But before they left, David and put his hands through the opening of the, of the incubator. I gave him a father's blessing. And we know that that father's blessing was a thing that helped him live. And so for about two weeks, it was touch and go with the hospital and and uh, he was at one hospital and Annette had a C-section. She was at another hospital and she had to pump her milk and I had to take the milk to the other hospital for the baby. And and if you could see pictures that we took at the hospital, you'd think that Nanette and I were both gonna die. We were the, we looked perfectly <laughs> horrible. <laughs> And anyway, but oh, he's such a doll. He is such a doll. I just love Scott. And uh, but everything turned out fine. But it was really scary. And then Dana, she was the best thing that has ever happened to our family. She she was adopted, and at the time Nanette had Guillaume Barre, and I said to Tom, I said Tom, there's no way she can. I said she could. She was like it's, Guillaume Barre is like uh, polio. You're, you're paralyzed. She couldn't walk. She couldn't use her arms. She could she she could do anything. And here they call her and tell her the baby has arrived to come and pick up this baby down in southern Utah. Well, I I couldn't imagine how, how she was ever going to take the baby. 
uh, in this condition. And Daddy said, no, everything will be fine. We'll, we'll go. And so we flew up to, they were in Bottleford, Utah. So we flew up, and the people next door loaned us their great big Lincoln. And we went down to Nephi. Well, we went down to Richfield. We went down to Richfield. The baby was born in Nephi, because I always think of Nelson and Nephi. And, but we had to go to Richfield to pick up this baby at the lawyer's office. And so Nanette couldn't even go to pick up the baby. So Daddy and I went, and we went to pick up the baby. Beautiful little thing. Oh, she was a beautiful child. And so we took her home, and, uh, and there she was. Nanette wasn't even able to, she, we had to put pillows under her arms so she could hold this baby. Well, when she had this Guillain-Barre, they had, they were taking all kinds of tests. They had no idea what it could possibly be. And so she jokingly said to them, well, check and see if I'm pregnant, just being funny. Because, well, she was pregnant. She had been trying all this time to get pregnant and hadn't gotten pregnant. So now here she has this brand new baby and she's pregnant. So seven months later, Craig is born. Well, luckily, he's a whopper. I mean, he, he's now six foot tall and weighs 200 pounds or more and, and just a great big strapping man. And Dana is the tiniest little dainty thing you've ever seen. Well, she is now married at this time and has a new baby. So she's thrilled to death, and but like I say, she was the best thing. Nanette just had to have that daughter. She just needed her. And she was there from heaven. So that's Nanette's family. Okay. We didn't talk about Craig much. Well, Craig, he's... He, he's... He's at the Harley dealer. We have a great picture yeah, of him. I, yeah, I have, a, I have a picture of me on the Harley Davidson motorcycle with, with Craig. He, he is a typical, not typical, but he looks good. That, that motorcycle that he matched, let's put it that way. And he works for Harley Davidson. And um, so when I go there, he takes me for a ride on this Harley Davidson. <laughs> And we go whip it on around the streets and, and have a great time. And play cards. And, and then we always play cards. In fact, I play cards with Dana and I play cards with Craig whenever I go. And so Craig makes a, a date with me. He'll say, Grandma, I'll be home at 9 o'clock tonight. We'll play cards. And I said, okay. Otherwise, he doesn't get home at 9 o'clock. <laughs> uh, but anyway, he, he and I play rummy, gin rummy. And sometimes he beats me, sometimes I beat him. And he said, well, Grandma, can't you let me beat, you know, beat you once in a while? I said, no way. I said, I'm trying to beat you every time. So, so we have a real good time. So we always have fun when I go to see them. And I go to see, luckily, I'm able to go see all my kids. And they come and see me, and, and we keep in real close contact all the time. So that's great. Okay, now we come to Bill. Well, Bill, of course, he, he's my first son. And he was born two years later after Nanette was born. And um, so uh, he, he, he really surprised me as he got older. He, he, he's doing all the gene gene genealogy work for our family, which I never thought that that's what he'd be doing. He's a temple ordinance worker. He's been bishop in two different wards. His whole family, luckily, are very, very active in the church, which Nanette's is and Rich's is, and luckily, that's my biggest blessing, that all of my children are active in the church. And they're not just lukewarm, I mean they're active. Just, it's wonderful. All of the grandchildren so far have been married in the temple. Out of all of my grandchildren's sons, eight of them, seven of them were Eagle Scouts. And the only one that's for you, you son of a gun, kid, I'm talking about Tyler. <laughs> he got all of his merit badges except doing his pro project and otherwise, we'd have had 100%. And he didn't get his eagle. So there, I'm telling you, young man. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, and so, so Bill, he and Debbie are the perfect pair. Sometimes I think they're on their honeymoon. They, they work together. They're both hard workers. They, they rearrange the house. Debbie has ideas about rearranging the house. They add on to the house. They change the furniture. They change the color of the walls. and You, you just never quite know what Debbie has as a project. But they get it done, and it looks great. 
And so they really are, they're a good pair. They, they work well together. And they go on trips. I always told my kids, go while you can. There will come a time when you can't. Well, Bill takes about six trips a year. And I think if you go on one trip a year, you're doing well. And he says, Mother, that's what you told me. Go while you can. <laughs> you may not be able to do it later. And he says, I always did what my mother told me to do. And that's a bunch of baloney. That's the only thing I think he ever listened to his mother say. And he's sure having a good time doing it. Okay, here comes Greg. Greg was the first grandchild. And when I went up to see them in uh, Provo, they were bills in school, and they were managing... Uh, um, Seville Apartments. The, the Seville Apartments that Debbie's parents owned. And Debbie wouldn't hardly even let you hold this baby. I mean, nobody was going to have anything to do How with that How long was this baby born after they were married? Nine months. Nine months practically to the day Greg was born to Bill and Debbie. <laughs> Eleven and a half months later, their second son was born. They had these two children with, with not too much time. but Enough time, but not, not too much. And so anyway, so Greg was the first grandchild. Well, so his mother really uh, didn't want anybody to even look at him, let alone hold him or do anything else with him because you weren't supposed to do that. I don't know. Anyway, but his, his grandfather, uh, Elkins, they called him Bob, Boss Band, they called him. Anyway, or Bapa. And he was forever bringing that kid soft drinks. When he was a baby, <laughs> he was always bringing himself to these soft drinks. And I thought, you know, that kid's going to lose all of his teeth if he doesn't watch out. And because of it, really, he, he doesn't have bad teeth, but, but he could have had better teeth if he hadn't had all this pop that he was always drinking. But anyway, Greg, I just love Greg, and he, he, um, he's married and has five children, and, uh, and, and the oldest one is not eight yet, so you can see they didn't waste much time having their children. But like he says, my dad and mother can't say anything, we're just following right in their footsteps. <laughs> so there you are. So now Dave came along, 11 and a half months after Greg, and he's the most organized. He has everything set out how he knows he's going to do it, when he's going to do it, how he's going to do it, everything. And when I used to go babysitting, which I did for all of my, great, my grandchildren, I went all the time. I was forever gone. Anyway, he would get dressed the night before for school and then sleep on top of his bed so he wouldn't have to make the bed and he was all ready for school the next morning. <laughs> Funniest thing. But getting back to Greg, when his the first day of school... His parents were out of town, as usual, and I was there babysitting, and so I had to take him to school for the first day of school. Well, first of all, I had to drag him out of the station wagon because he was screaming so loud that he didn't want to go to school. Anyway, so I finally drag him out, push him in the door, and I thought the teacher can worry about him later. I just said, I'll be back for you later, and he was screaming when I left. I don't know whether he screamed the whole time or not. I went back and got him. The second day we went to school, we went through the same thing, <laughs> screaming his head off. Anyway, after that, he was fine. He finally, I guess, figured, well, Grandma, she's going to take me to school. I might just as well go and be happy. So I, I got to take my grand, first grandchild for their first day of school. So that was fun. Okay, here comes little Rich. Well, he was the one that was born just uh, practically two days before my mother had her final stroke. And uh, so it was... Uh, and they left. Bill had graduated with his master's. Uh, Little Rich had arrived, and they had bought a house, and they were leaving for Pittsburgh, California. Bill had got his first job with Lincoln National Insurance. So he, they were on their way. And so those, so there's three, they were up there. Well, then before they left up there, uh, they were there for several years, both summer and autumn were born up there. So we have two California babies and three Utah babies. Well, she was the first granddaughter. Summer was the first granddaughter. And now she's married and has two beautiful little girls. And she, she, she's, she's just a doll. She's just, all of my grandkids, I've never seen such pretty, 
pretty children. I mean, I don't care what you say, they are pretty children and lovely, lovely children. And then two years later, Autumn arrived and she is mom and daddy's little girl. She was absolutely spoiled rotten. No matter what she did, isn't she the cutest thing? She's just a little Debbie. I bet I heard a million times how she's just a little Debbie, the cutest little thing that ever lived. And she really is. She's a doll. So she's at this pride time. She has a little boy, and they call him Torpedo because he, he, he gets around just like a torpedo. And she's expecting another baby. She's going to have another little boy. So that is Bill's family. Wonderful family. They all live in Mesa, Arizona. Okay, now we come to Rich, my bonus baby. Oh, I was so thrilled. I hadn't had any children we'd been trying for seven years. And lo and behold, I got pregnant. And now I had never had any miscarriages or ever been pregnant before. I only had three pregnancies, and, and but it was kind of hard to get pregnant. Not like my son Bill and his family. Okay, so there's Rich. Like I say, he's my baby boy, and he can do anything and knows everything. No matter what you want to know, you ask Rich, and he knows. Like he says, if he doesn't know, he'll make it up. But he really doesn't make it up. He knows. And if there's anything that needs fixing, anything that needs done, he can do it. He is the most unselfish, wonderful child that anybody could ask for. Even though our other two are perfect, there's just something about my rich, my rich, that is just wonderful. And he is so kind to do things for other people that I don't think I've ever heard a word that isn't wonderful about my rich. And right now he's bishop of his ward. And I know he makes a wonderful bishop because they couldn't help but just love him. And everybody says they love him, so I guess they do, or otherwise they wouldn't come out of their way to tell me that. I'm sure they would. And he has these beautiful children of his. He has five children. He has two boys and three girls. And, um, and I'm at Rich's house right now, and this is why he's making me do this. <laughs> and... Um, so anyway, there's my rich, because they can do everything, and I just absolutely think he's perfect. And then Carolyn, I mean, they make a wonderful pair. And as I've said before, I can never repay Carolyn for how she took care of Daddy for me. And she's very talented musically. She plays the guitar, she sings, she plays the piano. In fact, I'm just really jealous of all of these grandsons and, and granddaughters and children and they're, 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 they're so talented in things, and, and they use their talents. And, and, and she, they're love, both of them very, very active in church. And she, uh, I, I, I don't know, is she still the chorister for the... Uh, she's the primary pianist right now. Oh, she's the primary pianist right now. But she has been the chorister, but she's very talented in music, and she's made some little recordings. And, and when they first got married, she, she made some of the cutest little songs, he'd play her guitar and sing these songs, and just, just beautiful. Well, and here comes Tyler. Well, all of, well, I won't say this because I, I'll hurt feelings, so I don't want to say that. <laughs> anyway, he served, he, he served, and, and I always, always write him big, tall, and handsome when I, when I write him letters when he was on his mission. And so I said to him when he got home, I says, did this fit you? He said, yeah, he says, that, that just fit me. <laughs> So anyway, he, he, he's, he's just a doll, and he's married now and he, to Monica, and she, she's a sweet thing, and pretty as a picture. In fact, she looks like the family. She looks like she belongs to the family. She has dark hair and her dark eyes, and she just mingles right in with all the other Mercedes here. And uh, anyway, so he's married now, and they have this little boy, and you'd think it was the only child that ever lived, <laughs> but he's only three months old, but I truthfully, he is something else. This little one, he turns over already, and he smiles, and he goos, and he coos, and his father just, oh, he just looks at him like he's going to eat him up. He's so cute. Anyway, so that's our Tyler. And then there comes Melissa. And she is a beautiful girl, and she's a ballerina, a very talented ballerina. And uh, she um, has now, and very artistic. In fact, this whole family's artistic. It's wonderful. But anyway, so she uh, has graduated from college. In fact, all of these grandkids that are old enough have graduated from college. It's wonderful. And she is married, 
and to, to Mark, the Yoder, and they have this little girl. Well, a year ago, right now, uh, she was pregnant, and just the two days before Christmas, she had a little Madeline, and she was tiny. Was she four pounds, five ounces? I think so. Very tiny, just a tiny baby. She had her a couple of, a little bit early. Anyway, we have pictures of her in a big Christmas stocking. And this baby is put in this big Christmas stocking and pictures of her. And now, of course, she, she's, uh, actually, she really is only the size of this other baby who's three months old, but he's Nathan. big. And she, she's not overly little. She's just kind of a regular size. <laughs> this other one looks like he should be up walking. But, he, <laughs> but anyway, she's just about ready to walk. I would imagine by Christmas time she'll be walking. And she's a beautiful little thing. Well, and here comes our Kevin. He's a character. He he loves big cars. And when we had a big Oldsmobile, we gave it to him. And one Christmas, I guess, I didn't ever get to see it, but he was telling me about it. He had lights all rigged up somewhere in the inside and had <laughs> a right. big, uh, what, did, a, uh, a, what, what kind of light on the outside? A spotlight, yeah. a spotlight from a police car on the outside of this car. Well, anyway, the policeman finally said that it was too distracting <laughs> to having this car ride around with the lights in it. <laughs> These Christmas lights all lit up. <laughs> so he had to take the lights out of his car. I didn't ever get to see it, but I, I, would, I would have think it, thought it was something else. But he loves huge big cars, old big cars. So anyway, but in liking big cars, he writes the tiniest of any I've ever seen. You, you, you practically have to get a magnifying glass to see this. So I told him when he was on his mission, I said, either write larger or type it. I said, <laughs> as well as I can see, I said, I can hardly read your writing. It's so tiny. So I, don't, I just imagine he's still writing just as tiny as ever. But anyway, he, he's, he's, let's put it this way. Kevin has a, a whole different beat to his, to his, uh, whatever they call it. He, he dances to, the, to it. A beat of a different drummer. He, he's a beat of a different drummer. <laughs> and, and he's very musical. He, he plays the organ. He plays the piano. He uh, uh, plays the drums. Uh, he, and, and he's married to a, a lovely young lady. And she's very talented. She plays the harp and the piano. In fact, she gives piano lessons. And so they've only been married a few months. And they'll do fine. And uh, I don't know. We've been very lucky with who our kids have married. We've got some great in-laws kind. And then there's Maria. She's also a beautiful dancer, a ballerina. They they've been taking lessons for forever. This this whole group. And uh, so she's now at the age where she's starting to date. And she has. And she says the boys here in her because she's kind of tired of them. So she's met a whole group down in St. George. So she's having a new little uh, thing in her life right now with the boys from St. George. And, and she is a beauty. She, she's really nice. And then there's our Megan. Oh, my goodness, my Megan. She danced for me. She can dance. And she's also a, takes ballet and is a ballerina girl. And Rich took a picture of the three daughters in their ballerina outfits. It's right Right here me. in back of me. Oh, I hope it's there. Can you see it? Did you see it? Yeah. Anyway, it's just beautiful. Oh, and I also forgot to tell you about Rich about being a photographer. He's really just like a professional photographer. He has taken some of the most beautiful pictures and runs all kinds of ribbons at the fair. And, um, oh, I can't tell you enough about my Rich. Anyway, so here's our Megan back again. But she danced for Grandma. And when Grandpa was here, she used to dance for Grandpa. And he loved to see her dance. And that was one of the nice things about being here, so he could see Megan dance for him. And anyway, so she's the baby of all the grandchildren. So she was just uh, icing on the cake when we had her. And she came along seven years later after all the other grandchildren had arrived. So she was just like her daddy. He came along seven years after our children. So anyway, that's the end of my grandchildren. And so now words of wisdom. <laughs> the eleventh commandment is never pay to, uh, retail. <laughs> never pay retail. 
There's always some place you can get it wholesale. <laughs> I was raised in a very Jewish community, and Jewish people, they never pay retail. Let me tell you, they have a friend, they have a brother, they have a cousin, they've got an uncle. There's always somebody in business where they can get it wholesale. So I was raised that you, you always got it wholesale. And I love a good buy. In fact, I never buy anything to buy it. It has to have a story behind it. And a lot of people give me beautiful things. And it's so when I look around my house, I can think, oh, there's that friend. She gave me that. There's something else somebody else would gave me. And I, I just love to have a story behind everything. Okay, and don't go into debt. That is the paramount thing. Do not go into debt. Do not use your credit card and pay interest on it. Terrible, terrible way to live. If you can't pay for it, don't buy it. You think you might just can't live without it? Let me tell you, you can live without it. Don't buy it. And save some money every month, even if it's five cents. Even if it's a quarter, put it away. Have something. So when a good deal comes up, you have some money. You can take advantage of it. You don't have to go and buy it on credit. And be of service to others. That's nearly the very most important thing. And right up here at the very top, do your church work. Do your callings and be happy about it. And most of all, pay your tithing and your fast offerings and you will be blessed. And as I've said before, if it wasn't for this wonderful gospel that we have, none of this would be possible. That's what's made everything possible. And I love you all. Thanks, Mom. That was great.